Hello everyone and welcome to a new course that I will be starting. This course is going to be different to the others and it's going to involve making our own game. And this game is going to be chess. I felt like we already know quite a lot about programming uh, and programming languages. We know especially about Python and Ruby, which is why I'm going to be using Python this time. As you can see, I've already got Python open here. So you might think that chess is quite an easy game uh, to program perhaps, but well, you will see. It's not that easy, it's not that difficult, which is why I chose it as well, but it's not that easy either. So because we're not following anything right now, I don't have much pre-planned. So I will be going on research, which I will be showing you the process of my research, how I'm going to be doing it, how I'm going to be writing everything out. If I feel like something is too prolonged, gets too boring, I might cut th those sections out. Do post a comment down below and tell me whether you would like me to keep it in or take it out. Uh, I do appreciate the feedback and might change my opinion or what I'm doing based on that. Also, in advance, I would like to apologize if you hear me blow my nose or drink some water. I've been recovering from a cold from over the weekend. So, let's get started. So before we start make, actually writing any code, I just forget about Python completely. We're going to start by writing pseudocode. So with the learning about this course, I'm going to be teaching about normal programming as well. So the procedures you would take to make a program. You'd never start off with actually making the program, unless it's like a really simple program, in which case then just go for it. Uh, but the first thing you normally do is well write pseudocode or find a flow or design your own flowchart because i feel like pseudocode is slightly more advanced than a flowchart and i prefer it as it doesn't require any shapes i'm going to be using pseudocode a flowchart to start programming is also fine so let's find out what pseudocode is i've already put it into google i will be using google and other resources in this program i am not going to be limited just to code academy as I mentioned before. So, pseudo, the word pseudo on its own means fake. Code, well, it just means code. Pseudocode means fake code. And in programming uh, context, that means code that logically, by if you follow the steps of which, would make sense in a program. However, it won't resemble any programming language normally. Uh, sometimes they you can have things looking similar to one or another programming language, but normally it won't look the same. And it's it can be the bare bones, so pseudocode can be the bare bones, it can be something more advanced as well. So let's see what the dictionary definition is. A notation resembling a simplified programming language. So yeah, it's simplified, you can't go into more detail, as I will show you what I mean by that as well, used in program design. So, I would say not design in planning, more, well, early stages of design, fine. So, let's start about thinking with chess. Here's the chess board, here's, uh, here are the, oh, I can't remember, there's the link if you want it. I'm just going to be thinking about this image, have it in front of me pretty much constantly, so that I can remember what the chess board looks like. So, we have a chess board. In our program, we, we don't have anything resembling a chessboard. So let's start off with the basics. Why not assign some variables? Why not start by making a blank chessboard? So make a chessboard. Let's call it chessboard equals a list. We, let's start off with a list. I will explain why a list isn't the best thing to use here. But I will start off by using a list. So, uh, this list is going to have, well, chessboard is supposed to have 8 rows and 8 columns, as you can see. So to make that, we need to make a two-dimensional array. How do we do that? Or, well, yeah, array, or list. How do we do that? Well, we put lists inside of lists. Which means that inside of here, we will need to put 8 different things. But because this is pseudocode, what I will do is make something like chessboard equals, we don't even have to use equal, 
we can just say uh, list chessboard equals is a 2D array 8 by 8. So you can have something like this because we're just planning it for now. It doesn't even have to be proper pseudocode. We're just planning it out. We can easily do this in Python later on. So we've made that. We've designed this uh, blank chessboard. So I mentioned previously that a list might not be the best thing to use. This is because uh, the columns are numbered from 1 to 8, whereas in a list they would start from 0. So that would be one thing that we can get around, but it might get annoying. Another thing is the rows, well, no, these are the, the rows are numbered and the columns are with letters. The columns having letters might prove slightly difficult or at least annoying. We can still work with numbers if we wanted to make keep it as a list. However, if we use the dictionary or a hash, in other words, we can have each row uh, or each column represented by a letter, which could be helpful. So instead of list, why don't we put a uh, hash or dictionary, whichever one you want to call it. In Python, I do believe they're called dictionaries. And here we can say 8 by 8 and we can have um, numbers, numbers to letters. Just leave it like that for now, that is all fine. Before I move on, I would also like to say that you can program in any word processing uh, environment. You can even program in Notepad. Uh, the only reason why normally you would program in like Python idle or integrated development uh, environment is because you can easily run or execute or compile. In the case of Python, it's uh, even though Python is an interpreted language, there's kind of a debate between whether it's fully interpreted. So I will just call it, uh, I might, yeah, you can, you might li hear me say both compiled or interpret, interpreting. So in Python, in this environment, it's easy to run. Whereas in this environment, if you have the code, you can't run it straight away. However, if you copied and pasted it or opened it with the Python idle, then you can run it. So sometimes if you prefer using a text editor that isn't provided with Python, you can still use it. Just you might need to do other steps later on. Also, I don't exactly know how I'm going to be structuring these lessons. I feel like I am going to be making them about 15 minutes long each, maybe 20, really depending on how we're getting on. So, okay, now we've made our blank uh, chessboard. Let's move on. So what do we want to do next? Well, the chessboard is blank. Why don't we put the pieces on it? So we can have a function uh, default or clear chessboard because if you clear a chessboard then that means reset it put it in its original position which means the pieces are going to be in this place so function just leave it like that for now later on when we come back to put in the details we can assign we can put how we're going to be doing this so that's our function we are going to need that so next thing we might want to move the pieces, but we don't have anything mentioned about the pieces, so why don't we make assign pieces, or what are pieces? So now we might get a bit more advanced maybe, and think about classes. So make a class piece, you can have something like that, and then other classes can inherit so class pawn, for example, inherit from piece, something like that. We can also have class queen, inherit from piece, class king, inherit from piece, 
plus Brook, Inherit from Peace, and so on. I am going to put them in. Knight, and we also have Bishop. I believe that's the last one. If I missed out one, then no big deal. I am going to be looking back at this later on as well. So now we have the pieces as well, assigned as well. Next thing, think about moving a piece. If I wanted to move, for example, the pawn, I can't just move it anywhere on the board. It doesn't work like that. I can only move it in from its current position, either one move forward or two moves forward. We can define special conditions later on, such as en passant, but for now, let's just think about how we would check movement. So, class piece, inside of that, we can indent, and we can have some a function called check move. Uh, let's see that, check move. Well, not the function, in this case, it would be a method. Method check move. Or check, uh, not just the move, check valid move. That's the word. That's going to be different for all of them. So maybe we might not want to put it generally. So maybe we would want to put it underneath all of these. We can just copy and paste it. There we go. So now we've decided what's a valid move. To make the move, we would have to ask the user to input where they want to move to and also uh, which so which piece they want to move and where they want to move to once they tell us that we need to check whether uh, met check valid move gives us true so this would be a boolean value I can put bool in front of it just to remember for later on I know that this might not be very good pseudocode, however, we're getting the logic across, therefore it's fine. And it's just a plan as well, it's not uh, that big of a deal if you don't do it correctly. As long as normally you can understand it, it should be fine, especially if it's a one-man project, which for me it is. So we've checked, uh, we've got this boolean method, then we want to check, uh, so we can have output. Normally, if you have something like uh, comparison, output, input, uh, you put it in capital letters in pseudocode, so input, move to make, so that would be a string, and then we can have uh, pro, so we can call method check valid move, and then we can have that on the certain piece, for example, or p actually it would be piece dot check valid move, whatever the piece is, or to put it even more simply, we can say move piece if check valid move, and if check valid move is true, then do that. So we can even make it better uh, by doing this if check valid move move piece quite simple we understand what it means we have else also these should be in capitals because they're doing something else output invalid move Please try, please try again, for example. So what that would do is it would check whether the move the player has made is valid. If it is, it's going to move the piece. And if it isn't, it's going to return invalid move. Well, uh, it's not going to move the piece yet. We again need a new function or method, which we can call, so method move piece. And in this case, we can put it in, inside of the piece class because all of them will need to be moved. However, their rules for check valid move will be different. And that is what we want. So maybe now we need to think about how we would name our pieces. Maybe we should have thought about that earlier, but 
we can come on to that right now. Just as a side note maybe, so I'm going to be using this as maybe comments, even though in pseudocode everything's kind of a comment, but I'm going to be using this as side notes. So what I will be doing is calling the pawns uh, P. I know normally you don't put anything to call a pawn, but because we're making a program, I do want to specify pawns as P. I will call the rook R's, the knights N, bishops B, king, no that's a queen, sorry, Q and king K. Uh, knight is not a K because we already have a K for the king, which is more important, so knight, because of the N in there, we call it an N. Uh, the same thing goes for the black pieces, however, for the white pieces I'm going to be using capital letters, whereas for the black pieces I'm going to be using lowercase letters. So for example, to identify this pawn over here, I would say, uh, so B7, and in front of that lowercase p, so PB7 to call this pawn. To call this queen, I would say capital Q, notice, D1, and that would give me this queen. So this is how I plan on doing it. So let me just note that down, I would say something like white pieces, capital letter, plus location, black pieces, lowercase letter, plus um, location. And then to move to a certain other place, uh, I would have to check whether it's a valid move first. Then I might check whether uh, there are other of your own pieces on that to check that it's valid as well. So I might include that in valid move check. Just thinking forward, uh, I would name the location just normal. So we would have D3, E5 g6 for example if i wanted to move there and so you would say in, in my program what i plan on doing is if i wanted to move this pawn to here i would say pd2 and then where do you want to move it to and i would say d4 and then it would run all of the checks and if it's acceptable it would move note that this program for now will all be text-based Meaning that I will have to represent everything inside of a small textual board. However, I do plan on later on putting it into a more visual, maybe using Python Turtle, or we might actually transition into using some other programs, which I'm not going to mention right now because I can't promise anything. However, yeah, I think that that's quite the basic plan. So. And I think that this is going to be quite a good point to stop for now. And then in the next lesson, we can expand and see what check valid move is or check what move piece is and so on and so forth. So if so far you're enjoying this series, then please give me a thumbs up, share, like, and subscribe. I know it's something new. I want to try it out. I feel like Code Academy is just too kind of slow for now. And like we've exhausted quite a few of the resources on there as well. So yeah, until next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.